It happens to be Farncombe in Surrey, but you know what? It could be anywhere in the UK. When the post office came after Shirag Sipura for £57,000 he didn't owe anybody, his life turned upside down. He was forced to hand over this business. Now he works there to make ends meet. Everything got taken away from me overnight. Um, my, my post office, my business, um, my income, everything. All because they were too proud to admit that yes, actually, Horizon could be at fault. Angela van den Bogert was the post office executive at the centre of scores of lives ruined. 33 years in post office management, pursuing sub postmasters to court, to prison, repeating that they, not their Horizon computer system, were at fault. Angela van den Bogert, head of partnerships, post office. She publicly placed herself centre stage telling MPs in 2015 she's involved in 150 cases and there is no culture of denial. Looking back over the cases that we have investigated, in some of those cases we could have done that a bit better. So it's not that we, there's a, a culture of denial here. I've personally been involved in each of those 150 cases and, and got to the detail. In some of those cases we could have done a bit better. That now looks like the very definition of a culture of denial in action. Shirag still recalls what Angela van der Bogert said to him. Her words were that money doesn't have legs, it's got to go somewhere. It makes me feel really angry at the fact that they knew, they knew what was going on at that time. We've unearthed a direct warning to Angela van der Bogert early on in this scandal. A post office IT expert tells her that Fujitsu, here in Berkshire, can alter sub-postmasters' accounts without them knowing remote access. Now this is way back in 2010, December the 5th. It's in an email addressed to her from a post office manager spelling out that remote access is out there. It's happening. I found out this week that Fujitsu can actually put an entry into a branch account remotely. This issue was quickly identified, but it impacted around 60 branches and meant a loss gain incurred in a particular week in effect disappeared from the system. Now then, eight years after she's had that clear warning that remote access is possible, and indeed a year after the post office itself admits that it's possible, Angela van der Boga does something extraordinary. She writes a witness statement almost 40 pages long saying again and again remote access is impossible. Moreover, she blames the entire fiasco on two things. The sub-postmasters being incompetent with their figures, which wasn't true, or the sub-postmasters being criminals with their fingers in the till, which also, of course, was not true. Here's that statement dismissing remote access. These allegations appear to me to be absurd and, in my experience, would be contrary to the post office's ways of working with sub-postmasters. And there is no transaction that enters their accounts without their consent. On and on it goes in similar vein. In the end, even the judge in that court case ran out of patience with Angela van der Bogert's apparent refusal to tell the truth. The Honourable Justice Fraser said she did not give me frank evidence and sought to obfuscate matters and mislead me. On the accuracy of van den Bogert's witness statement, he said this. I do not consider that her written evidence had provided plausible explanations. These explanations were not based on the facts. That stinging rebuke would follow her here to Cardiff when she left the post office for a high-profile role with the Welsh Football Association. For one member of the Welsh Parliament, the judge's words made her position untenable. He said uh, she did not give frank evidence during that case and she sought to mislead him. Now, that is highly uh, inappropriate. It shouldn't be happening uh, in this day and age uh, in the United Kingdom in a high court. Uh, I thought, frankly, it was disgraceful. Angela van den Bogert left that job, but she could just walk away to a lifestyle of some affluence. Others, however, cannot do that. Because of the scandal, that was all taken away and... Mark Kelly lost everything, home, business, mental and physical health, after wrongful post office prosecution, collapsing in shock in a police station. They wanted to interview me under caution and I became catatonic. And you, you collapsed? 
I, I collapsed and I became non-responsive. Your mental but, health exploded that day, there and then? Yeah, and they wanted to carry on the interview with me if I didn't respond for me to be, for that to be a yes answer. My solicitor said that's unacceptable. So for my he became dad, suicidal. Gizmo, his support dog, now essential for getting through each day. The post office gone, he gets by helping out in his wife's market shop. His hope now that the public inquiry will at last produce candor about the wrongful prosecutions from managers like Angela van der Bogard, responsible for them. Why did you do everything to protect the brand? At the end of the day, the brand is the postmasters, not the post office logo. And your actions, okay, may have delayed the destruction of the brand in your eyes, but now the brand is completely tarnished, where no one wants a post office anymore. Our report took us from Surrey to Swansea. All the while, Angela van der Bogert refused to answer any questions from us, but said she supports the public inquiry. Next week, she appears before it for two days of questioning. Will the truth? finally emerge.